What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. Look at the training you need to do, look at the workplace, work out what it is they need to know, teach it overtly, don't assume that they know things, teach them exactly what they need to know. Um, give them practice in it, break it down into small parts. A lot of students forget things and they come in and they didn't know what area was. They didn't know why area was. They didn't understand the background behind what we were doing. So I think it's important that teachers don't just assume that they know how to do something and say calculate the area of this table top. You know that they need to say uh, look at the formulas and have discussions about what is the formula to calculate an area. We'll have the heading perimeter, so that's the heading, and then we'll always, what do we mean by perimeter? It's the distance around the outside. So we'll always define the word and uh, area. I'll always go through how many squares are on the surface and, yeah. We use a lot of props, scales, measuring jugs. We've got conversion tables so that we can convert from grams to cups. A lot of recipes and everything that we use are in cups, but we don't always have cups on hand in the kitchen, so then we, we've got our conversion tables to look at grams and everything, and we look at liquids against um, solids and how we can differentiate between the two and work out which forms of measurement we need to use for them. If we've been talking about um, fractions and where we use them, then I would come down here and I would show them a particular piece of machinery here and I would explain to them, for me to use that, if I don't understand how to work fractions, I'm not going to be able to use that particular piece of machinery. We need to unpack it and see which bits of mathematics are most likely to be the difficult um, concepts to put across and then I build exercises find exercises or build them myself depending on what is required and if I see that there is an area of weakness where I don't happen to have an exercise that's just right well then I make one and it's easy enough to do. The workbook a lot of that basically came from worksheets which I had designed. I took it from a mathematical point of view so I decided the first thing we needed to be able to do was convert millimetres to metres so it was like a, a quick lesson, a revision of multiplying, dividing by 10 hundred thousand. And then we moved on to the metric conversions. And we only do one small concept each lesson. If we're starting volume, we just do volume. We don't do concrete orders. And we'll leave that for the next lesson and just break it into small chunks. Think about it yourself if you're delivering it and think, what is the very first thing I do? and start you know, writing down step one, step two, step three yourself, and that would help them uh, with the delivery of the numeracy. We give them plenty of uh, practice in the, in the classroom in regards to building their, their skills and getting their confidence up, and then it's basically ongoing. They would be expected to use what they've learnt with their calculations for their workshop tasks here, be able to use them in an assessments as well. I'm very careful that I don't ask a tricky question of a student who I know is at the bottom of the class. So I'll, because I'm going around just pulling people out willy-nilly, but then I'll sort of wait for an easier type of question, which looks like it's random, and I'll make sure I've asked the student who was weak to answer that question. Maths is everywhere. I mean, let's face it, it's, it's a fact of life. So often I find that it's good to have analogies with money because everybody's dealing with money all the time, so why not use that as analogies for your decimals and then develop from there and then you can go into your hundreds and your thousands and so on and so forth and go further. But at least you can bring them together with something that they do know and then develop, oh, hey, you're really terrific. You managed to do that. That's terrific. Okay, let's do the next step. Any work that they do for us here, they are given feedback, constantly given feedback. If they do an assessment task, we will give them feedback on it. Um, we found that if you don't give your, your students or your learners any feedback, they can't develop, they can't grow.